looking at um, this company, Zentalis, cancer-focused company. They've got the We One inhibitor. We One has been a weird target. It's not worked great for biology. I'm gonna start keeping this oncology spreadsheet up to date, start working on it a little bit. Let's list some oncology proteins. What do you guys, do you know? Do you know oncology? Let's see, there's EGFR. Let's see, there's uh, VEGF. Uh, solid tumors only. We do hematology, oncology, and a different, different, uh, different setting. Um, let's see, give me some targets. PARP, PARP's a good target. How about PD-1? Um, let's see, what else? Any, any molecule, just uh, s solid tumors only. Let's see what sells well. That's a good way to think of it, right? <laughs> Probably like you could, you could look at some of the DNA targets. Um, CD47, I don't know, I'm looking for FDA approved targets that are like well-known, well-trodden, well billion-dollar drugs. Well, let's see, which, which ones do we have here? We got Herbitux here. CD19 is Hemonc. Uh, Truda, Herbitux, but Tegrizo, Veressa, Oparpsin. We have Limparza. What else? C2A4, good one. How about uh, the target for um, Pfizer's main oncology drug, Ibrands? CDK? CDK46, right? What else? Gotta have a lot more than this. Come on. Let's look at some of Genentech's drugs. Lag3? Uh, that's actually a pretty, pretty good one. TNF is not an oncology target, even though you would think it would be, right, with, by its name. How about, oh, there you go, HER2. HER2 is an obvious one. Solutions, ALK3, another good one. Solutions, I mean, we make drugs, solutions. Uh, MEC. Met, right? Trap two, good one, good one. Let's see. Uh, RAF, right? RAF and RAS. Do K RAS here. BCMA is. Uh, TNF, tumor necrosis factor, that's an autoimmune thing. ROS1, good one. PI3K, excellent. Uh, no, PI3K, yeah, there are PI3K for solid tumors too. I should make a quiz or something like that. Uh, there's Hedgehog. Great name, right? Or is it smoothened? We got her two already. Isn't Rosley track uh, track A and Ross one? What other targets do we have here? So I'm gonna start doing some of the investigational targets, of which there are many. Uh, Zalota is an old chemo. Probably doesn't make too much sense to put in there, but uh, Zelboraf is the RAF kinase inhibitor. What is Opdivo's um, generic name? Somebody knows off the top of their head. I know I do. It's a good pop quiz for you. Keytruda is Pembrolizumab, right? Keytruda Pembrolizumab. Which one's Opdivo? I'm gonna write it. Maybe you guys can. Uh, there we go. Be Beirutus knows. 
of course it's Naval Yamab. You never forget. Oh, you did a study on it. Cool. So this is Antalus, is what we're looking at. It's a publicly traded company. Their drug's called ZNC3. Um, it's a We1 inhibitor. We1 hasn't really worked before. See, it's interesting they called a first-in-class We1 inhibitor, where I'm pretty sure AstraZeneca did a We1 inhibitor too. It looks like they're already having some dosing problems. Uterine serous carcinoma. I think that's just basically, isn't that the main histology for that tumor? Pretty sure it is. What are the female reproductive cancers? Female reproductive organ cancers. The gynecological cancers. There are five. Cervical, ovarian, uterine, vaginal, and vulvar. Vulvar and fallopian tube cancer. Most of the time we talk about ovarian or cervical. Mostly ovarian for metastatic though. So here we have uterine, which I think is a little bit more less focused on. Bye. So I guess they've had some tolerability issues. They said a better hematological or gastrointestinal tolerability problem uh, profile, which means that they had a problem with that before, right? And if it's a better profile than before, it's more tolerable now than before. So we'll assume there's some kind of issue tolerating this. We're looking at a biotech company. I haven't done that necessarily in a while. Biotech and pharma, good question, Apollo. And you can always ask me. You know you're my bro. It's a very stupid distinction. Technically... Um, biotech was the uh, is anything that uses a biological uh, system to create the medicine. So something like um, in E. coli or Cho cell. Cho is Chinese hamster ovary. These are cell sort of systems that biotech companies use to make biological drugs, like an antibody or say insulin or something like that. Pharmaceuticals is a chemical system. So you use your traditional chemical tools like fume hoods and things like that. Different reactors, uh, reaction, basic chemical reactions instead of a bioreactor. No, uh, testing is another form part of the industry. This is just simply about the molecular creation. So any small molecule, say something you can draw uh, let's look at Tegrizo. This is a best-selling drug, kinase inhibitor. You can draw its structure. This is a small molecule. You can see literally every atom. But if you want a, a, an antibody, let's say this drug, eculizumab, there's no way you could actually draw its entire structure, at least on a piece of paper, because it's so complex. It is so large that uh, it'd be, it's a it's hundred times larger, right? Here's a, here's a structure actually, it's five by five K. Let me use my software, drug-like, to look at it. There's uh, no software like this on the web that I'm aware of that's available for free, so pretty cool product, uh, PNH. Um, so anyway, this is an antibody and you can see just how much larger it is, right? so much larger than, than a small molecule. In fact, I can actually use my software to analyze it and try to find a drug that could, or a molecule, I should say, that could go inside of this um, system and inhibit it. So I've actually, we recently improved the software so that it, it <laughs> no, it's embarrassing me, that it works right away. But I think there could be a, a error with this exact thing. So let me show you a different maybe a different one. Sometimes you have to prepare the protein a little more extensively. So I just got blue screened in my own demo. This should hopefully work. Here's a small molecule within this protein. And you can see these small molecules start to work and they calculate the score. These are really low scores. 
but the protein in the green ribbon is very large. The one little drug, the small molecule, is very small. So that's kind of the difference between a small and a large molecule. Typically, you make a large molecule through biological reactions, um, and you would make a small molecule through chemical reactions. So anyway, this is uh, one piece of software that we have. Uh, the other one's Godel, or Financial Terminal. I love making software. And you can see this, this is running on, on AWS, so it's slowly calculating thousands of different combinations of drugs. Uh, you can even calculate a mil million combinations. I did a million molecule screen uh, a little while back, um, which was really cool. So this is getting stronger and stronger fine finds or hits or scores. There's one in three dimensions, and you can see the green molecules, the green colored atoms are part of the protein, whereas the kind of gray ones are part of the, the theoretical potential molecule that could stop this protein. You see it kind of fits like a lock and a key. Does that make sense? And it'll start kicking in into a second cloud processor that'll go quite a bit faster. So it doesn't use uh, too much uh, um, AI just yet. We have a fragment-based discovery module that we're going to roll out that does use AI. AlphaFold determines the shape of the green protein, but AlphaFold does not calculate what we calculate, which is, you know, will, will this molecule be a good fit for this protein? So two different parts of the problem. The 3D protein folding problem is AlphaFold's problem. This is called the ligand docking problem, which is a search space function optimizational functional optimization problem. So we've screened 100 molecules, and now I think this is when the cloud processor kicks in, but I'm not sure. We've recently made some, some updates. Anyway, this is free for up to 10,000 compounds, so you can use it at your heart's desire, and then it's quite cheap, I think, for more molecules. It's about a, a dollar for 1,000 molecules. So you can do a million compounds pretty easily with a couple of clicks. Right now, the competition can't do this as far as I, as far as I know. So anyway, that's how that works. Uh, that's the difference between biotech and pharma. And it's increasingly become an irrelevant difference. Uh, pharma, for a long time, was the domain of the industry, right? Whereas biotech was something a couple of companies did. Now all the big pharma companies, they do quite a lot of biotech. So it's not unusual for Pfizer or Merck to actually be more of a biopharma bio company or a biotech company than a pharma company. And you'll see small companies do bio, you know, do pharmaceutical research. So sometimes people just said biotech just means a small company, but that's not really the case. So it's kind of a si silly distinction. So biopharma is kind of what I like to call all these companies. You're a biopharmaceutical company, not a biotech company or a pharmaceutical company. It's sort of all the same now. All right. So they keep talking about dose optimization here. So it seems like they're, they're having, they're struggling. Uh, and that's never good with a cancer drug because you usually do have to combine it. Oh, there's osteosarcoma. Uh, one of our friends had a family member die of that dis disease. So I'm really happy to see somebody doing a trial in osteosarcoma, which is one of the rarest cancers that very, very few companies really Exactly, amputation is the general way to handle osteosarcoma. All right, let's see. They're even gonna present some of the data, which makes me wonder if... All right, so I don't know why the company is worth a billion dollars. I'd like to see if they've had any efficacy lose $50 million last quarter. And I thought they had different drugs the last time I looked at them. So I wonder what the heck is going on with their pipeline portfolio. New York City and San Diego based company. I think I knew the person who started this. But I don't remember. It's been a while. All right, let's see what else. Q2 results now. They added a CEO. So it looks like they discontinued it. their CERD. CERDs are this is what I knew them for, their old CERD. And they had an EGFR inhibitor, so they killed both of those, which is really sort of surprising. 
definitely a company that's either struggling or kind of in transition, but the valuation would suggest otherwise. Okay, let's see what happened here. I wonder if they fired their CEO. Oh, there's Anthony Sun. He uh, became the CEO of the, Chi the Chinese subsidiary, I guess. They founded this company after I founded um, Turing, after I left uh, Retrofin, my first drug company. So pretty recently born company, but you know, it's been around eight years and they have a billion dollar uh, valuation it still looks like. Let's see, uh, 1.4 billion. And I think they mostly do degraders like Protax. Okay, so new CEO, no big deal. Okay, here's some results. Oh, look at that, 30% ORR. Is that monotherapy? No, with chemo. Not sure that counts, right? I knew how to do it with chemo. Okay, 63% in one cohort. Okay, so when they say first in class, they mean what they hope would be the first approval in the class. That I knew it was definitely not first in class. So it looks like this class of medicines is fairly toxic, but uh, nine patients with paclitaxel, I'm not sure that that... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical that that 60% response rate is... What's PLD? Is that... Uh, Hmm. Uh, okay, pegylated liposomal doxorubicin, doxol basically. Okay, so doxol, carboplatin, and, and paclitaxel. I don't know. This data doesn't look that good to me. 30% ORR with combination chemo. You know, companies will always do this. Oh, well, the standard of care is 12% ORR or less. Therefore, this, this drug works. And that's not really the right way to look at it. Cancer companies have been doing that since I was a little kid. Yeah. But, you know, because they don't have anything better to do. They have to, when you have one drug, look, this company has two drugs. You know, you got to put the best face on it you can. And they just discontinued their last two drugs. This looks like a short to me. Be a short. I like that I use my own software to analyze this company. I, I had to just uh, add this, this company to my database today. Now let's see if there's a holders list I can glance at or I still have to input this company into my system. So I maybe have some errors. Well, for now I can look at uh, NASDAQ. <laughs> I'll have to debug what's going on here. Um, let me see. I have to think about that. Matrix is the largest stockholder. Then FMR, then Avidity. Bunch of bag holders. I'm kidding. Uh, there's Fidelity. Well, Matrix owns 20% of the company. That's pretty significant. They have a billion in global foundries. Almost a billion in Transdime. Half a billion in Altair. Half a billion AMAC, Qualcomm, Amazon, quarter billion in NVIDIA, CrowdStrike, Twilio, Micron, and that's their biggest pharma holding, Centalis, mostly uh, tech focused. But I think they do some VC too. Yeah, this could be a good short. We won is a, it's been a not so great uh, indication. I'm sorry, mechanism. I remember talking to the RZA about molecular structures. He asked me what I did. And I was like, well, you know, I'm in pharmaceuticals. He's like, well, what does that entail? I said, well, I spend my day looking at things like proteins and genes and molecular structures. And he goes, molecular structures. I like the sound of that. I'm going to put that in a song. <laughs> I just died laughing. <laughs> molecular structures.
he, he's a cool dude. 